Hello, everyone. My name is Sean Freeman. I am the onboarding specialist here at Bombora. And today I'm going to be talking about how Bombora's company surge UI can be used specifically for sales, account prioritization, and prospecting. So just to give the quick basic elevator pitch for Bombora, we tell you which companies are researching your products, solutions, and competitors. And what's fabulous about Bombora is we're actually able to tell you if companies are researching your solutions. So they may not know about your company, for example, your product names, but they may know about the problems that you solve for and be experiencing those. And they may already be looking at your competitors. And that is the perfect time to prospect those companies and start calling, start reaching out to them on LinkedIn because you can solve their problems. They're just not um, sure about you yet. So it's your chance to put yourself out there. So first, just want to really quickly define what makes us different uh, than other intent data providers. We're always going to be letting you know um, research being done across our data co-op. So it's not Google searches, it's actually research across these different publications like you see on here, Variety, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, et cetera. And you're able to understand that research is going on across these multiple different platforms through the forms of articles, subscriptions, webinars, infographic viewing, form fills, et cetera. And we're able to discern research being done on your company across this network, across all these different publications. And we serve that to you in the form of intent in a surge report or in some of our integrations like HubSpot or Salesforce. So before I dive into what this data is actually going to look like, I want to define a couple terms because I'm going to be using these throughout our presentation today. Number one, we're going to be talking a lot about topics. Now, what are topics? It's just the subject matter and nature of online content being researched and consumed. So we'll look at a couple examples of what topics are. And what's great is that where using natural language processing. So we're able to understand if a topic is being researched without the actual topic being mentioned. For example, say somebody is consuming content about a chocolate chip cookie. They might just be reading the recipe and maybe they see things like brown sugar, chocolate chips, flour, etc. There, that article does not need to be titled chocolate chip cookie for us to understand that is the context of that article and that is what that company is researching. So that's a little bit of extra information on topics. When I refer to topic clusters, I'm talking about groups of like-minded topics together. When I talk about topic count, that's the number of topics that exhibit a surge score of 60 or higher. What that means, that directly ties into our surge score. That's essentially the intensity of research that a company is doing. So for example, when a company hits a score of 60, that means there is an increase in research. They're now um, showing that buying intent. And as a result, we're surfacing them to you on this report. And the number of topics that exhibit a surge score of 60 or higher, the higher that number is, the higher the buying intent there. And finally, you'll see me talk about Delta just a little bit. That essentially shows you the variance in research that company is doing this week as opposed to the previous week. So the first thing to do if we're ever going to be interpreting a surge report is first of all, figure out what your company's clusters are. This is a great point to check with your management and see what clusters you're using. So I put examples of some clusters, for example, for a cybersecurity company or managed services provider. These might be some clusters that they have, some competitor names, some um, topics related to antiviruses, and then some general managed services related topics. So these are three different clusters that my sample company is using here. And that's what you'll want to do with your own company is make sure that you have a clear understanding of what topic clusters have been picked for your company. Finally, we get to the fun stuff, actually using this data in action. So really what this data is going to help you live and breathe by is Pareto's principle. You want to spend your 80% of your time with the 20% of prospects most likely to buy. Because we don't have a lot of time, especially when we're prospecting. We can't go after 200 accounts a day. However, inboxes are more crowded than ever. We want to make sure that we're actually standing out. So how do you personalize, but make sure that you're also reaching out to the right people? That's what Intent Data is going to help you do. So that when you're narrowed down to the, just the few companies that actually are showing buying intent, as opposed to the entire B2B web, 
you're able to really take that time to personalize. And our data can help you with that content too. So let's take a look at a sample report. You're going to see this in an Excel file. You may have seen it already, but let's break it down. When you get a Bombora data report, you're going to see a list of company names, average scores, that's that surge score I referenced earlier, top account, as well as top account delta. You're always going to want to prioritize this report based on top account, with the secondary option being average score. So as you see here, for example, Northern Power Grid Limited, they're my number one company showing intent on 11 of my topics. They're actually looking at four more than the previous week with a score of 69. And at number two, we have IKEA. They're looking at just, uh, just slightly less intense than Northern Power Grid, and they're actually increasing their research with seven more topics this week. So this entire list would be companies that we really want to make sure we get in front of because they've got high top account, high average scores. So let's drill into one of them. Let's take a look at this IKEA securities here. Here we're able to see that they have an average score of 68, a top account of 11, and uh, of topic delta of positive seven. And here you're able to see exactly what each of those mean. Now what's next? What are they actually looking at, right? Okay, we know they're looking at these topics, but what's next? These reports will show you which clusters they're looking at. So we see they're looking at five topics related to managed services, two to antivirus, and they're looking at four of my competitors. So I know right away that I want my content to be related to managed services. All right, managed services, antivirus, that's great to know the ideas, but what topics are they actually looking at? What are those 11 topics? Here I break it down and I see that they're looking mainly at managed services with big data analytics, information technology, disaster management, health IT consulting, and disaster recovery as a service. Here are the competitors they're looking at and a couple of topics related to antivirus. However, I see that the majority of their research is going on in managed services. And I would much rather reach out to a company that's looking at five different topics related to a service that I'm offering, as opposed to just two topics uh, related to a different service. So who's in the market? Our ge geographic feature allows us to see where that research is actually coming from. So I see most of that research is coming from the New York metropolitan area. So I already know I'm going to be talking about information technology, disaster management, managed services uh, that we provide, and I wanna target people based in New York. So then next step is I'm going to look and find them. I'll go to my contact data provider and make sure that I have a nice list of New York-based titles that I think may be researching those types of topics. So what do I do next? Hit all the channels as I would for any other prospecting. And of course, the more channels that you're hitting, the more multi-threaded your approach is, the more likely you may be to get a response. So for example, you could go out, connect with them on LinkedIn and share a blog post based on disaster recovery, or you could make a cold call and you know exactly what topic and what service you provide they're going to want to hear about because you've already seen what they're researching. And you can send relevant emails with subjects related to the topics they're researching and personalize it. Maybe this company had a data breach. Maybe that's why they're researching disaster recovery. We do our research. We have a short value prop and we continue to send them relevant messaging that truly relates to what they want to do and the problems they want to solve. So when do they wanna hear from you? Right now. The minute that you see them pop up on that surge report, that is the perfect time to start prospecting them because 70 to 90% of that journey is complete by the time they reach out to you. So you want to have that first seat of the table. And really, those are the key takeaways of today. With Bombora's data, you're conveniencing your prospects, you're getting that first seat at the table, and most importantly, you're getting that time back. You're really able to spend that time personalizing with those topics, making your messaging super relevant. You're not spending the time figuring out which companies might be a good idea to target. We're already telling you that. So thank you so much for watching today and happy to um, be able to teach you about our intent data. Thank you so much.